Hi everyone, in the previous video we have completed theoretical part of connectionless socket and today we are going to see practical view of connectionless socket. First of all we start with import section. We have to import certain classes in order to use them in this program. If we forget to import all of them or one of them, compiler give you an error called cannot find symbol. Let's start. Datagram socket datagram packet, inet address, socket address, inet socket address, socket exception, all these classes resides in java.net package and io exception resides in java.io package. Then UDP client our class, public static void main, then try and catch to handle certain exception because some of the constructors and methods might throw socket exception or IO exception. So in order to handle this, we enclosed this all the code in try block. Then first statement socket address. Socket address represents IP address and port number. INET socket address is a subclass of socket address arguments. Get local host is a static method of INET address which returns an object of INET address pointing to the local machine. In this program, our local machine acts as both client and server and 1200 port number. These two details are used to bind our local machine for the communication. We pass these two information as a socket address object to the constructor of datagram socket in order to construct object of datagram socket. This socket will be used to communicate with server. Then a simple string message hello world inet address local inet address dot get local host this method returns an object of inet address pointing to the local machine as we have discussed get bytes is one of the string method which returns byte representation of string as a byte array in our case byte array by will have byte representation of hello world next statement datagram packet message is equals to new datagram packet byte array and byte arrays length this statement will construct an object of datagram packet and this object contains our message and message length. Then observe this statement. Get address method of datagram packet returns destination address. But here we haven't specified any destination address. So ultimately init address will be pointing to the null value. And this statement will cause null pointer exception as we are accessing memory which will have null value. So we will need to move this statement at the bottom after connect method or after send in order to remove this error. Now it is correct. Now we remove this comment and move for the next statement. In the next statement we have another method of datagram packet called get data which returns byte representation of message that we have already assigned to the datagram packet. In our case, it will return byte representation of hello world. And to print hello world, we need to convert this byte array into string and our anonymous object will do this. You can actually create named objects if you have any other usage of this string. But next method of datagram packet called set data which is used to assign data to the datagram packet. I know we have already assigned data to the datagram packet, but now suppose we want to alter our message or update our message. Suppose we want to remove exclamation mark from the hello world. Then we can do this with set data. Three arguments are byte array our message offset starting position of the message. Suppose here we specified one, then message will starts with E. And last parameter is length specifies the length of the message. Here we specified 11. Let's count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. As you can see, exclamation mark is removed. Then next method is of datagram socket called bind. An argument is socket address object that we have declared and instantiated in the first line of the try block. 
This method binds or assigns local machine's IP address and port number for this communication. In our case, it is our local machine's IP address and other details and 1200 port number. Then next method of datagram socket called connect. This method is used to connect to the remote location or remote server. Here our remote server is also our local machine. So we give this inet address object to the connect and destination port number is 1300 then next method of datagram socket called send this method actually sends our datagram packet to the server then as we have discussed for these two lines then close method will close the socket and disconnect method will disconnect the socket from the remote location here you might be thinking of that disconnect method should come before the close method. Yes, it is correct. But if you write after close, it will have no effect. So it will not give you an error for this. But you should write disconnect before close. After that we handled the socket exception and IO exception. Now let's move to the UDP server. In UDP server again we imported certain classes similar to the UDP client. Then our class UDP server, public static void main, try and catch block to handle socket exception and IO exception. First statement will create a datagram socket object that is listening to the 1300 port number. Byte array buffer stores our incoming message. Datagram packet message stores our incoming datagram packet. Receive method will receive and stores data in this datagram packet called message then this string will convert our byte data to the string as we know get data will return byte array this is offset and this is length this will return length it is 11 in our case then we printed out this statement and we close the socket after that we handled the socket exception and IO exception now let's run the program. In order to execute this program, we have to open two command prompts. One is for server and other one is for client. First of all, we compile the UDP server.java. Then Java UDP server. Now server is waiting for the client. Let's compile UDP client.java. Java C UDP client.java Java UDP client ok an exception occur socket exception already bound let's check the program ok here you can see we are trying to bound local machine second time so this statement causes an error so we will need to comment it out now again let's run the program this time it works you can see this is earlier message with exclamation mark and this is host name of PC on the server side you can check our message without exclamation mark hello world in the next video, we will see another interesting topic of advanced Java. Until then, this is Vishnu Pura signing off. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe us. Please press the bell icon for latest updates. If you have any doubt about the video, you can ask me on the comment section. Goodbye.